Hi everyone, this is Trey Parker. This is Matt Stone, and we're doing season seven commentary for a seventh season of South Park. Yeah, this was, this was, I remember this whole season was our fifth year anniversary. We'd, we'd had our big fifth year anniversary party right around then. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and then, so we've been on for like five years, and we were about to hit the big 100 episode mark, which I think we did about four shows in. Mm hmm and, this uh, was originally going to be the 100th episode. Yeah, we were going to make this the 100th episode, do this big thing where we did a, a repeat, sort of do the first episode over again, and that's where this whole idea came from, was like, now that the animation sort of changed a lot and it looks a little better, like, re redo the first one, and, but change it just enough, and then that's where the whole idea for the... For the reality for show. the reality but, show came yeah. in. And then, I think what happened was we couldn't come up with a good first episode, <laughs> so... Well, it usually happens in normal this. fashion. Yeah, we're like, well, what do we have ready to go? And so we went to this <laughs> for the first episode. Uh. <laughs> I also remember this was the season that we hooked up with Norman Lear. That's right. Yep. Norman came to one of our uh, writers' retreats and actually came to a couple of writers' meetings. So we actually credit him on a few shows. Yeah. As a, as a writer, which he was, he was in the writers' room. In fact, I think it I think it was Norman at the writers' retreat that said, "Have you ever, guys ever done anything about reality TV shows?" Yeah, that's right. He didn't get them. You know, he was like, you know, aren't they, aren't they, you know, dumb? And we should make fun of that. And we're like, well, we watch reality shows all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Funny that Norman wouldn't. Uh, I remember we tried to pay Norman too, like he was a normal staff writer, and he wouldn't take our money. <laughs> 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 so he's an unpaid writer. <laughs> yeah. That was a pretty. It was a. It was a pretty big honor to have him sitting in the writers' room. Yeah, he's you know, cool. I he's guess. very cool. He's. Uh, but um. For those of you that don't know, Norman Lear is a, a producer who produced. He, his big thing he sort of started with was he got the show All in the Family on the air. He produced that, and uh, you know it was Archie Bunker from that show that Cartman's basically based on. So, uh, but this show was kind. It was kind of fun to go back and basically the, what you just saw. We did the, the whole first m two minutes of the very first pilot episode of South Park and we just sort of redid it and changed some things and had them swear a lot more. But it's just funny to look at, it was funny to do this, you know, and then look at that original pilot and see just how much the animation's changed and how much the, the writing has changed and everything. And now it's funny almost four years later to watch this episode and see how much it's... Yeah. You know, I remember that, that cracked right down the middle joke that just showed. I remember Trey wanted to put that in an episode for a year and he never <laughs> could figure out how to put that stupid crack down I the tried middle. To, I tried that's to. been in like five episodes before it finally ended up in this one. I've tried to put that, yeah. And I've tried to put that in a lot of episodes. And then the other uh, things that are in this episode, there is a, 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 a bad Jeff Goldblum uh, character who's basically like Jeff Goldblum in, in um, Independence Day yeah. where he makes all these insane... He gets to the bottom of it through these insane uh, free associations. Yeah, someone says, oh, I've got a cold, cold, cold With virus. virus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God. That, yeah, that's how he does it, huh? His dad, yeah. uh, Judd, that Judd Hirsch has a cold in Independence Day, and that makes him think to put a, yeah. use this Apple laptop to bring down the aliens. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing that's in this, obviously, is the <laughs> Jewsians that control all the media in the universe. Yeah. Because um, Jews don't, but Jewsians do. Right. Um, and my favorite thing in this episode is the ice cream shitting taco. Yeah, which that I think was, was a dummy version. That was a good example. Someone says dummy version like, yeah, ice cream <laughs> shitting taco. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Let's just use that. And there's also uh, my favorite part of this is suck my jag on, or I can't believe I sucked your jag on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this dude takes off the wig and it's like dun dun dun. <laughs> but I also really like the there's the the Dukes of Hazard car chase in this. Oh one, yeah, that's right. The they, Dukes of Hazard. Yeah. They sort of freeze frame for commercial and everything. This is a pretty good episode. Yeah, no, I, I was watching the other day. I was watching the part where the ice cream shitting tacos talking about the show, and it's it's really good. This is a really good show. <laughs> <laughs> I think this was this. I think I say this every season, but this was the season I feel like we finally hit our stride, and all the seasons before this were dumb. <laughs> all the seasons before this were crappy, but this one was really great. <laughs> That's so, uh, this, yeah, we'll it? move on to the next one and talk about it some. <laughs> <laughs> this episode's Crazy Cripples. This was another. This was one of those episodes that we kicked around for at least a solid year? couple seasons. Yeah, a year, saying, I'd say. Let's do it. Let's make fun of Christopher Reeve. And enough people in the room were like, dude, not cool, <laughs> that, that we never did it. And then finally we did it here. <laughs> it took a solid eight months or so. I think we finally just saw that Larry King interview. Oh, yeah, that's like, what it was. Now we got to do it. Yeah, I remember we were too good. doing. We were actually at the writers' retreat, and we saw 
Christopher Reeve on Larry King basically saying a lot of the things that Jimmy's making fun of him for, which is, you know. <laughs> I remember why we're so pissed at him, actually. We were pissed at him. We just thought it was, I don't know. I saw it, it was, it's, it was that idea that uh, somebody who was born disabled, you know, would, <laughs> would, would feel jealous of all the attention that uh, Christopher Reeve was getting since he became crippled later in life. Right. I think that was the, that was the idea. <laughs> yeah. And this was our, uh, we took the, the lamest little joke idea, which was, you know, crip, cripples being crips, and then having crips and bloods, and ended up making it really spectacular. This is really a great show. I think this is a great episode. <laughs> I think it's probably one of those but, episodes where you first watch it, you don't laugh for a little bit, because you're like, are they really, you can't do that. I remember when we first animated this scene right here, we first animated, because Matt went in and did the voice. <laughs> And then we animated, and so many of the animators and people in the building were just like, dude, that is so not cool. <laughs> so, so not cool. And then we basically have, you know, in this episode, is Stan and Kyle sort of represent that position of, like, I think we'll just stay. <laughs> See, this is what's so funny is you can do whatever you want. As long as you have one of your characters say, dude, that's not cool, then it's fine. This In this episode, yeah, we have our characters. They basically are voicing the uh you know let's stay out of this one that this is kind of whenever you're all making your shows out there like and you want to do something that's really hardcore and you really shouldn't do just have one of your characters go dude that's not cool yeah you shouldn't do be that. fine you shouldn't do that's that. really the secret of all our success actually that's all we do there's some good superman 2 references in this too yeah. with hackman hackman which we were i think it's super awesome creative idea to take gene hackman and make it hackman like he's a superhero <laughs> that's really simplistic and then the end, isn't it? Christopher Reeve is in the little 2D yeah, crystal flying through Superman space. That, like, isn't that in Chris Superman 2? That's the prison that they were in. The nuclear bomb blows them up. Good um, Superman 2 thing. This is really, it's it's really great because I think I think almost all of our Jimmy Timmy episodes are really good. Yeah. I mean, Timmy episodes and Jimmy episodes and Jimmy Timmy episodes. And uh, it's just like, um, we've actually, it's surprisingly to a lot of people, we've gotten so much positive feedback from Tons, these two characters. Yeah. Um, it's just a big article we read in one of the Seattle papers, and it's basically like a lot of, a lot of handicapped people like really embrace Jimmy and Timmy just because we kind of, the boys kind of treat them like they're just their friends, and uh, and in fact that Jimmy would get so pissed and want to kill Christopher Reeve is like kind of empowering, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what it is. They're just not treated with any pity because they don't yeah. want it and they don't really deserve it. They're full-fledged members of the, you know, of the town. <laughs> I remember too the end that we didn't have an end for this and we couldn't figure out. Oh, that's right. <laughs> all right, they've got them all locked in at the rec center. Now, what is Jimmy going to say to finally make the Crips and Blood stop fighting? And we just couldn't think of anything. We couldn't. Th and then finally, it made sense that we just had him. St we started the scene, and he was just like, come on. And then we were like, well, that's enough. Just come on. And then everyone started embracing. Yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> and I think we have, don't we have, like, one black guy that came in and did all the black guys? No, there? no, we got the uh, three. Oh, two, four. two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe two. Come <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's move on to the next episode. Yeah, that, that was great fun. So this episode, Toilet Paper, was one of those one of those many episodes that I I think we came up with on a on a Thursday, and we didn't really have an idea. A lot of times when we get into the run, as we start like to, it's, it's sort of backwards from what you would think. Like when we have the time and we we all sit down in the writers' room and try to come up with episodes, and we've got you know a, a week for three weeks or a month before the show starts airing. We're, it's just a void of ideas. Like, we just cannot come up with anything. And then as the season starts going along, we can sort of get in the room on Thursdays and things sort of pop into our heads. Like this. Like this yeah. scene with put more hair on the balls. <laughs> yeah, put more hair on the balls. <laughs> it's sort of the first, really, really the first line of the show is put more hair on the balls. But um, it was another one of the, you know, show ideas come from everywhere, and this a lot of times they're from uh, saying, all right, what do you remember about being in third grade? And I just remember that we had talked about toilet papering a house, and uh, and that's sort of where the whole idea came up. In this episode, Kyle's guilt gets the best of him, and he's convinced that they do, they have done they you know they you know it's like that guilt that comes after you've committed a horrible crime. I know after I committed my first murder, I was just racked with guilt for for years afterwards. 
And then this also has one of my favorite parts of any South Park episode episode ever, which is where we cut to Nancy Kerrigan. <laughs> yelling yeah, the why. first time <laughs> the first time Kyle's having his flashback and it's like a it's the woman whose house they toilet paper going, Why, why? And like kind you'll kind if you really remember the Nancy Kerrigan thing, you'd you'd know we were making that joke. But then he has the dream again. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Back at you again. Hello boys, find everything you need? Yep, I said. Okay, let's see here. Toilet paper? Toilet paper? Toilet paper. And uh, there's also good Hannibal Lecter. Toilet paper? Uh, so what do you kid in this. Little Hannibal kid. Little Hannibal Lecter kid. Well, we bas- I was watching this, and we basically didn't even really parry him. We just sort of stole the line. We just said the same lines. <laughs> it's sort of plagiarism. <laughs> but it's referencing it's toilet paper. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Is that plagiarism? But we had it. But he's little, so it's okay. Okay. Um, okay, toilet paper? Hmm. What else is in this? Oh, actually, one of my favorite scenes. Is this the one with the This is where Cartman takes him out on the lake, yeah. yeah. And it's sort of the the mafia scene. (laughs) Cartman's going to kill Kyle with a baseball bat. With a wiffle ball bat. Yeah. We should have Kyle do that, or Cartman do that again. Everyone duck by wiffle ball bat. I remember when we first did this scene, we had like a minute and a half long uh, really dramatic thing. Oh, <laughs> really dramatic thing where they're throwing toilet paper under like, uh, you know, that adagio for strings from Platoon. <laughs> it's like this. They were like, and that's and then no, no one thought that was funny, so we cut it down. But we kept it real s- kind of serious in tone. Yeah, it's really mean. But I like this show. I like I like the shows like this that are kind of like just kind of cute, just boys being boys and and just kind of kid like. Those are my favorite ones. So let's move on to the next one. One of our other favorites. So this was the 100th episode of South Park, which obviously was a big milestone for us. I think we had a cake brought into the office. And we had a big cake that said 100 episodes. Said one, and we took a picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we did. Send everyone back to work. Meanwhile, <laughs> we're working on this show, which uh, so this was a this was uh, this was right around about the time of the second Iraq War, and you know there was just this real funny thing going on where. You were you were hearing all these new kind of country songs about you know we're gonna go over there and kick some ass you know those kind of songs and then you were hearing the rockers all come out and sing you know talking about peace and talking about what are we doing over there and all this stuff and it's just weird the musical styles almost weird, matched yeah. up completely. It was just like okay, country was pro going to war and rock was anti going to war and that totally is Donnie and Marie Osmond on a little bit country. <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> they really figured it out long ago. They're the we should send them to yeah. the UN. They, I mean, Osmonds and that really is out. that 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 I think is the healthiest politics for somebody to have. What because what Donnie and Marie were really saying was, if you notice, you know, that Donnie would be singing about how he's rock and roll, and and she would be singing about his country. She's country, but Donnie would never say, "Hey, Marie, you're lame for being country." And she'd say, well, you're lame for being rock and roll. They would start harmonizing together at right. the end, and it would be this kind of country rock thing at the very end. And both of them were basically saying. In the lyric, I'm only a little bit country. Right. And I'm a little bit rock and roll. Whereas, you know, if that show were in today's day and age with sort of the Michael Moores of the world and the, you know, the uh, Rumsfelds of the world, it would be, I'm a little bit country, I'm a little rock and roll, and then Donnie Marie would proceed to breathe the living crap out of each other. And, and fuck you, I'm not, <laughs> no, it would just be fuck you, I'm not singing with you. Right, exactly. Maybe it was because they were brother and sister, but. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Donnie, Marie, Donnie Marie really had it down. Um, <laughs> this was sort of a hybrid of two ideas because, um, Again, when uh, a big thing that Norman Lear uh, bought a copy of the, the Declaration of Independence, you know, for like ten billion dollars, and uh, he takes it around to schools and does this really cool thing where he has, you know, has kids see the Declaration of Independence and try to get them kind of stoked on what our country's supposed to be all about. And so when he was there at the writers retreat, we're like, well, maybe we should do something with that, you know, something with the Declaration of Independence and the founding fathers. And that was really this whole idea. Every time we thought of it, though, it just came out being this kind of after-school special kind of cheesy thing, you know, yeah. that didn't really belong in South Park. And so, um, but then, you know, with the Second Iraq War, then we had the whole idea for sort of the, the Donnie the, Marie thing. Well, it's also a lot of people, when the, when something like that comes up, like, the, where they always talk about what the Founding Fathers would say. You know, there's people always bring up the Founding Fathers. of like, well, what would they think of all this yelling and bickering? Yeah. So that's what we kind of decided. And I loved, I mean, I, I really love sort of the point of view of the show, which Norman loved too, which was basically, you know, if they were here today, they'd be like, yeah, you people all go protest, and meanwhile, we'll all go fight the war, and that keeps us all clean of everything. 
Like we can, <laughs> America can go around and do what it needs to do and take care of business and kick ass. But at the same time, we'll all bitch about it so that, that we can always just point the finger to the president and say, oh, well, that wasn't us. That's the president. You know, not yeah, our it's kind of a great setup. Basically, no matter what happens in America, we can always just blame the last president yeah. and say that fuckhead screwed everything <laughs> yeah. up. And then I'm going to go and have my wine now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and enjoy and enjoy my great life. Enjoy the America. good life in America, yeah. and I'm gonna blame Clinton or Bush or Reagan or yeah. whoever. They're all a bunch of fuckheads. Yeah, it's their but fault, it's good to mine. have those. You know, and then on the other, you know, they're telling us it's, it's good. We need those people to go out and protest because that that helps us look like, you know, that helps us be as two faced as we possibly can be, which is extremely important in politics. Yeah, the founders were two faced. They understood the. And actually, Norman Lear in this is the voice of Benjamin Franklin. That's right. I'm sure, he was happy about. It. He yeah. did very well. We didn't have to do it over and over again. It's a funny thing when we do shows like that because basically, oh yeah, he's trying to have a flashback. <laughs> he knows he won't have to do his homework if he has yeah. a good flashback. <laughs> um, the, uh, you know, a lot of times, the because w- of the way we do the show where we do it basically, we think of it the week before, um, it means that a lot of times we have to go to the, some of the producers and say, hey, we, we need this song. We need to get, you know, this song cleared. And usually for a TV show to clear a song, to let them put that song on your show, is like, you know, a week or month long or a couple month long process where you've got to, you know, legally talk about how much you're going to get paid, how much you're going to give them and all this stuff. And for us, it's basically like, hey, we want we want your song on the show. It's going to be on in four days. You in? And this whole show hinged on us being able to get I'm a little bit country, I'm a little bit rock and roll. Mm-hmm. And I remember right up until like Sunday night or something, we didn't know if we were going to have it. <laughs> and the whole show hinged on it. That's just irresponsible of us. Anyway, I'm sorry. We've gone way too long on this one. We, we don't mean to bore you. We'll yeah. move on to the next one. And in so, Fat Button Pancake Head came from sort of two ideas. I remember we were in the writer's retreat, and we had the idea of... I started doing Cartman with the little, you know, Spanish hand puppet guy thing. What was that guy's and name? Then, yeah. What was his... Sir, uh, I can't remember. Anyway, there's some old comedian that used to do that, but... uh. Uh, and then we we knew we really really wanted to make fun of Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck because right about the same time the rest of the country was starting to hate them we were too <laughs> so we thought it would be a perfect thing to get on the air um, it took a while to to get the hand animation right on this sometimes the South Park looking the way it does and being sort of as simplistic as it is it kind of gets hard when you want to do little things like that <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, like that stupid thing. How do you do it and still make it look like it belongs in South Park? Pancake Head came from I think we were at a party and we met Ben Affleck, or we saw him, and he has a really, really flat face. It, it was remarkable. His head does look like a pancake. It's like it's like it's really big. A lot of actors have big heads. That's kind of why they look good on film. And his face is really flat. So we call but it pancake. It's, head. It's, if you notice in Ben Affleck movies, they never show him profile because his <laughs> face, his head is completely <laughs> flat. Actually. <laughs> He can only be straight, shot from. And Jennifer on. Lopez has a great ass. We just call her fat butt, just because yeah. that was funnier. I'm sh- it's going to be super fat any minute now. <laughs> <laughs> sure of that. And in this episode, there's a point when Ben Affleck falls in love. Well, he's in love with Jennifer Lopez, but he can't tell the difference between Cartman's hand puppet and the real Jennifer Lopez. That he, they go on a convertible ride, and basically, Cartman jacks off uh, Ben Affleck. Yeah. And I'm surprised standards let us do it. I'm surprised legal let us do it. Yeah. I just don't even understand why they let us do it. We shouldn't have been. There's about one or two things per show. I'm like, really? They're going to let us do that? You know? They did. Luckily for us, because it's it's funny. This is... is, The ending of this show is really great, Without, I was just going to say, without a doubt, this is my favorite. And it's hard for me to pick my favorite episode. People always ask me that. But, like, I can definitely say my favorite ending to an episode is the ending of this show. (laughs) (laughs) It's just so messed up. It's so surreal. You don't even really know whether Cartman's lying or not. Mitch Connor. Yeah, it's Mitch Connor. <laughs> He's been on the run. Sick of running. <laughs> it's like this whole other story comes into play <laughs> one and a half minutes before the end of the show. Although this and this episode actually did come full circle. This was one of those you know, there's there's many times where doing South Park is just so awesome. And this show was one of them when about five months later we heard uh, from some friends that were on a set of a Jennifer Lopez movie she was doing. And they said that um, when she would walk by, some of the like lower people, like the PAs and the grips would go, ooh, tacos, I love tacos. <laughs> and that she got so mad and had to fire people, but it just kind of kept, like she kept hearing it in the distance, like people s- saying stuff from this episode, and that made me so happy. Yeah. 
Latin people get pissed off when you mistake them for the other because she's Puerto Rican, right? That was part of it yeah, too. But it? who cares, right? Yeah, I think that's the funniest part of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's enough. Yeah, let's move on to the next episode. This is another show idea that came from thinking about things you did as a kid because I know I did this. We would. I know I had different groups of friends that, you know, all for a while thought they were going to be their own little detective group. Yeah. They sold little kits. I think I had a little kit where you yeah. got a little badge, you got a little notebook, you got a magnifying glass, you got some, like, dust or something, like, fingerprint dust stuff. There's, like, all these little things you could have in those your own I remember what I was detective. so stoked on when I, like, I think it was, like, two of my friends and I decided we were going to start a detective agency, and I set up my dad's desk down in the basement that he never used, and I... I like had my own desk and I got a chair and, and I put the Rolodex. One of those like, one of those ones that you you crank the little thing to the right letter to find someone's name and then flip it and it flips open. <laughs> and I just I was I was so badass. That's all I had at my desk was that little thing. But I had all my contacts. I'm a professional in there. detective. Yeah. This was like, this was about the time CSI was getting big. I think right. Yeah. That's sort of what this. So yeah, we have the. Uh, what did you get, Nick? I like this the scene where they try to figure out who ate the pie. Yeah. And then they. Uh, yeah, that's the scene where they go tell him about the, all the fucked up stuff that the dad. <laughs> I think that if I remember right, I think we had the idea for we had the boys, um, you know, getting a little junior detective badge from the detective department, and then the detective department basically going, "Okay, now here's what you're gonna do: go go take down a narcotics ring." And we sort of had right. that was sort of gonna be the beginning of the show was that they, um, but then we we sort of got into like, whereas it was gonna be just sort of one scene of them doing something and then the next the second scene of the show was going to be them giving their honorary badges by the detectives but then so we actually animated all that stuff we sort of animated the second half of this show first and then when we sort of got into it we said all right now how do they get their badges and we realized there was a lot of material there too and that's when we came up with the little uh the kids playing fbi oh yeah the kids are, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah yeah competing Which kids like playing the the fbi I that's pretty gross shot right there yeah i can't believe it i remember talking to them about that shot too i couldn't believe they let us do it they shouldn't know. Yeah. They definitely shouldn't know. It's not cool. Um, what else is in there? I don't know what else happens in this episode. Oh, guy Butters, Butters masturbates to ejaculation for the first time. Oh, that's right. That's Which movie. I still don't know if that's. I don't. I don't think he really did. He seems too young. He said he was supposed to be in there till white stuff came out, and then he's in there the whole show, and then he comes out at the end saying, "I finally thought about Stam's mom's boobs," and the white stuff came out. But I don't know that he. I mean, he he's only eight. I don't think I don't think that works when you're eight. I don't I don't think so. I don't remember that happened to me when I was eight. Yeah. But anyway, we should get to the next episode because it's actually one of my favorites of all time. <laughs> <laughs> this was definitely another last minuter. It was one of those uh, end of the season sort of. All right, we're out of ideas now. What do we do? Um, and we just started talking about Indian casinos. And uh, my grandmother used to live in Phoenix, and she would go to this Indian casino that was uh, within, you know, like 45 minutes of where she lived in Phoenix. And it was just the most depressing place in the world. And I think that's how we started talking about it. Yeah. And then it was just that really, I don't know, kind of simplistic, but that just, it was that role reversal of the, like, the Grapes of Wrath kind of story of the big business coming in and driving people off their land, but done with the, now the Indians that are building casinos yeah, as soon as and then it was just like yeah. boom then it, so many fun scenes to do yeah that's what, when 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 ideas like that come it's great because i can basically go write a whole show in about eight hours because there's just so much material there that and that idea of like that you know that idea of the, of the you know of just role reversing it just every scene was like oh yeah we could do that scene and then that scene yeah this is uh we have a great i think great joke. <laughs> this is good too though the, laugh. the way they laugh yeah and this <laughs> We have a chief, chief runs with premise, yeah. and then his little kid is premise running thin. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember the one, one of the later things, it was sort of a, a later idea as the show developed. We were like, oh, I know. How about, you know, just like we, we, we apparently tried to kill all the Indians with, you know, our diseases. It's like the Indians go out and get a disease. So SARS was a big thing at the time. Everyone was freaking out about SARS. So we gave everyone SARS, and then we we're sitting around the writers' meeting going, okay, now, what is the white man's cure for, for oh, yeah. SARS? And it was so obvious that it was Sprite and what is it like? Sprite, chicken soup and chicken Sprite, soup and Sprite, right? Or <laughs> Nyquil, and Dayquil and or something. And just so white true. trash. It's like that is just the white trash remedy, and it totally works. Yeah, I mean, it has as much. I mean, the thing is, is the the white trash remedy probably has as much scientific basis as like you know, 
the ancient remedy of the indigenous peoples. It's just kind of whatever works for you. Yeah. <laughs> whatever makes you feel good right then. <laughs> I especially love this episode. I really liked it. There was also, this was the episode where there was some... There's some kid that won something. Oh yeah, there's a kid that there was a for Elton John's uh, AIDS Foundation thing. Right. Uh, his dad had bid outbid everybody else for the kid to do a a voice on a South voice. Park. So he does he does a voice in this. So we're like, oh, what, what what voice are we gonna have him do? And then we just decided we'll just have him be that kid. We just made a little cartoon character of him. Yeah. We'll never do that again. No. Nah. <laughs> he was alright. I don't know if his dad was kind of a pain in the butt. Kid was nice though. But I mean, it's pretty amazing when I look at stuff like that because you know, again, to think that an episode like this we come up with on a Thursday and it's on the air the next Wednesday and it's like just all this new casino stuff and all this stuff that has to get drawn and you know, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing actually. Yeah, we're, we're fucking rad. <laughs> I also think this is one of those episodes that it's got so much material that you know, when we, we these are one of those episodes that when we talk to other people and. Uh, in town that make comedy there was like oh like not i wish i would have thought of that but i wish i would have figured out a way to do that because it's just like there's so much good material in kind of making fun of indian casinos but no one will do it but it's just so obvious it's so good i don't know luckily we found it yeah so that was sort of that season which i think i think we, I think we can all agree was a really good season thank you hold on hold on <laughs> Um, so I guess we'll meet you again up in the next one. So even though this is technically still season seven, this was actually a- another run of shows for us. This was like a few few months later. Um, took time off, went away, and then went to another writer's retreat, tried to come up with what we wanted to do for this season. And one of the first things that came up was how, because uh, that show Queer Eye for the Straight Guy was really huge at this time. And um, we're just talking about how how amazing it was, how far things had come, sort of since like we we first made um, Big Gay Al's Big Gay Boat Ride in the first season of South Park, and everyone was so sort of shocked that we would even have that gay openly gay character and sort of have that kind of thing on. He called himself Big Gay Al at the time. It seemed so edgy, and so, by today's standards, it so doesn't. Um, but like. Uh, we were saying that then it went into things like Will and Grace and everything, and it actually went to this extreme where gay was the new thing. Like, it, it was like just, especially in comedy, you were just seeing it. There was like gay jokes in every single thing. Right. There's always been gay jokes around, but like it started to become, it was just gay was the new black, basically. Gay was the new black, for yeah. sure. It was like gay, it was, it was just way cool to be gay. And then, you know, the whole term metrosexual came out of all that. So. So it was sort of one of the, the first ideas where we came up with, you know, what is the difference between metrosexual and gay? And, and, and it was funny because we were talking to, this was around the time we were working on Team America and developing Team America, and we were talking to Scott Rudin, who's the producer on that, and he's gay. And he, his take on, he, like, he hated the, the Queer Eye for the Straight Guy guys because he's basically like, that's the stereotype we're trying to avoid. Right. And not only that, but, like, they're they're taking like the gay culture is our culture that's that's they're taking our gay culture and making it not you know and not for is, just gays anymore there's a whole point of view in the gay culture which is like there's a death of gay culture because now it's become main, mainstreamized yeah whereas before they had their little place where they hung out you know they had their part of town and they had their styles now it's all been co-opted by the mainstream and there are some gay people that aren't super happy about that. Yeah. Which is kind of funny. So that's what we decided that would be a good point to have, you know, Mr. Garrison make. But really, this episode th- is really famous for crab people, yeah. which is the worst, probably the worst idea to, that we've ever had <laughs> put into action. And uh, Ann Garofino, our executive producer, hates it and reminds us all the time. I, she came up with it, I think. It was actually, <laughs> I think it was Ann's uh, idea. <laughs> we, um, we have this thing we do in the writer's room where... We, we call it dummy version, right? Because, you know, everyone, you're throwing ideas out, you're throwing ideas out, and so usually it's getting intense on, like, a Sunday or Monday when you've got a show and it's going to air on Wednesday and you, we haven't figured some stuff out, and so everyone's going, what about this, what about this? And a lot of times we'll say, all right, what about, like, dummy version? You know, and it's like, because it's basically saying this is sort of what it should be. This is this is too dumb of an idea, but it's something like this. Right, this model. So it was coming with this thing about, okay, what about, okay, dummy version, it's like crab people, and they're behind the whole thing, and and uh, 
you know, meaning that it should be like it, it's some, you know, it's some, it's some better some version of organization, that. it's some right. political group, it's something that we can figure out and make sense later. But um, but that they're know. dressed up like the queer eye guys and they're trying to make us all gay. Right. And because they want to take because they want to take over the you know, planet, or the Earth or the United States or whatever it was going to be. It could have been so much. Yeah, yeah. So many things. But we and still so we, stuck with crab people yeah, <laughs> because, because we were like better. trying to think of the smarter version. And then we're like, let's go with the dummy version. And uh, <laughs> we did the whole crab people thing. And it was a total. This happens a lot where it was like basically a total down the middle. Half the people thought it was great, and half the people just thought it was the dumbest thing ever. And and I go back and forth, but yeah. it's basically like it. You know, it's one of those things too that's just so dumb that it's pretty rad. And I do have to. I I love the song. I love the crab. Yeah, people I song. like the song. I have a soft spot in my heart for crab people, yeah. but I I don't have an argument when Anne bitches about crab people because she's basically right. Yeah, it's kind of lazy, but there's something kind of love. It's something kind of perfectly bad about it too. Yeah. Especially the song. Look at Chef's arm there. God. I know. There's some bad animation. What the hell was that crap? Yeah. <laughs> that was crap. Oh, we're getting better at this. <laughs> Looks like we have a wrong color. So, anyway, let's go on the next episode. This is a good episode coming up. This is the uh, Christian, Christian Rock episode, which was, I think, mostly inspired by, I don't know, we're big fans of Creed. <laughs> and <laughs> this was when Creed was really big. And it just seemed to be that. We'd I don't know how this episode started. I think it just started talking about Chris forming a Christian rock band. Yeah, we, we talked about we, just doing that. We had some real. friends uh, some friends who we would sometimes hang out, talk about how great it would be to make a Christian rock album, like go out with our own oh, money and right, produce yeah. a Christian rock album and make it like sound completely serious and then try to get it, you know, use our money basically to just get it out in the market. But if you really listen closely to the words, it was obvious that it was someone who was physically in love with Jesus, not, you know... So right, in love with his spirit. That's where some of the ideas and we were gonna, for Yeah, we were going to go to, like, all these Jesus fests and stuff yeah. where these guys set up booths and stuff And just like sort of that. make up a fake band. And it's a great idea if someone else there wants to do it. <laughs> feel feel free, because it's, like, a, it's a great idea if you could pull it off. But um, that was the whole thing, was the, the, the group of... And it, we were even going to call it the Faith Plus One. Yeah, Faith Plus and, One. Yeah. Uh, and so... When we decided, we I remember on the writers' retreat we came up with the idea to do a show about um, downloading music because it was when mm-hmm. all that stuff was going down on the internet and everyone was getting busted and so we decided to put it with our our Christian rock thing. Our Christian rock thing. We actually have full versions of a lot of these songs that maybe we'll release someday. This is good. This is good. Where Token plays bass because he's black yeah. too. Black people love bass. There's also this great. Uh, I like the moment in this where they go, uh, you know, they get busted and they're like, well, we didn't think downloading music was a big deal. And they, the guy kind of in uh, um, Christmas Carol style takes the boys around and shows them the harm they're doing and how Lars Ulrich can only, he can't get the new bar for yeah. his pool or whatever. <laughs> and uh, it really is kind of true. I mean, you know, obviously artists need to get paid for what they do and we get paid really well for what we do. But it's just hard to feel sorry that, for that. You know, like... <laughs> South Park was one of the first shows to get downloaded on the internet and be like all over the place and everyone getting it for free over the internet and it didn't hurt us at all. It actually helped, it helped us so much. Helped the show, you know, and it helped. Um, so you know, we we definitely don't. Most of the time, it's most of the time people who are downloading music and shows too. It's not like they're they're like I'm gonna buy that show. No, I'll download it instead. Although it does happen, it's most people are like I don't know. I'll just download it. I don't know if I like that. And then they see and they, it and they probably like wouldn't it. have bought it anyway. Yeah, they wouldn't have bought it anyway. That's you know. You know. It's just hard to feel sorry for some of those people. I know I don't. Let's see what else happens if it goes to. We really wanted this show to be. This about. is oh, this the end of this is good where they give him a Murr trophy or the Murr yeah. award. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that in this? Yeah. And it's also you know, amazingly, record, yeah, I don't know if they're record. gonna bleep me now, but in this show, Cartman says "fuck Jesus," mm-hmm. and I think that even bleeped, because uh, they definitely bleep the fuck, but it has to be the first TV show to say "fuck Jesus," even bleeped like. That's pretty hardcore. Why'd they let us do that? That's, <laughs> that's not cool. That's hardcore. <laughs> We're core, man. I just love the Murr record he gets at the end. <laughs> is that all? What else is in this episode? That's yeah. all that's in it. No, it's really, like I said, we wanted it to be a three-hour episode because we had full versions of these songs, and we, we like, had to keep cutting them. You know, sometimes we've only got 20 minutes, so we had to sort of condense all these great songs into one we sort of decided to make it like a commercial a KTEL commercial uh, for the Faith Plus One's new album you know and get just a little taste of each song but 
They're all for, they're all full versions out there. Maybe we'll get them on the internet so everyone can download them for free at some point. All right, let's move on. Listen to this. This episode was inspired by a horrific thing that happened here, right where we we live in uh, L.A. And at the Santa Monica Farmers Market, right before this, right before the show aired, so it must have been a couple years ago, 2003. This old dude plowed through a whole farmers market full of people um, and killed 10 people, I think, right? Killed a lot of people. I, I think know. it was 10 people. And basically his excuse was, I'm old. And he was. He was. He was like 85. And he just apparently, there's all sorts of stories, but he apparently freaked out and he floored it through two solid blocks full of people. He just kind of pulled a grandpa. I've driven around, you know, anyone that's driven around their grandpa, you know. Death but is in, imminent for somebody. What's weird is that, like, if you're familiar, L.A. is like any kind of big, sprawling city. It's not like, you know, New York or, like, it, there's nobody walking on the sidewalks. I mean, it's, like, a really sparsely, like, it's hard. If you wanted to run into a crowd of people in L.A., it would be, like, hard to find a crowd You'd have of to people. go to the farmer's market. Yeah, you'd have to go to the hippie farmer's market in Santa Monica. And I really suspect this guy just hated hippies and wanted to take some out. Or he saw a couple hippies. Or something happened, and then and then he was off, and then hippies were in his way, and he started freaking out. And you can just see an old crotchety guy getting into a bad situation and deciding to just floor it through a few few hippies. Yeah. And so it was kind of inspired by that, and we kind of wanted to make a show that just kind of ripped on old people. Well, because I remember that I, whether it was because of the media or whatever, because it was true, like there was just this weird thing where at that time, then all these other reports kept coming in about old people running over people. Mm -hmm. Because, and I, you know, I think it was just one of those things where no, it happens all the time. It just now the media was turning their attention on it. Right. It was like it was a particularly bad example of it, but the old people, like over 85 and over, are worse drivers than anybody else, and they get in the most, even more than like, like 16 year olds, and you know, when you're stupid, when you're 16 or 18. So. It's way, I mean, like, it basically is like driving with your blood alcohol rate of maybe, I don't know, 2.4. <laughs> yeah. Just, it's I think like for, every, for every year above 85, you are. With you're... earmuffs on, with like blindfolded and drunk is how you drive when you're when you're 90 years old or yeah. 85. And, uh, but it's a fascinating debate because it is like, what are you going to do? Take, you know, it's not really yeah. right to just say, well, you can't drive anymore. But I think you do Fine. have to maybe retest. Yeah, retest. But I mean, they, they always pulled that World War II thing on you and then yeah. you're fucked. I know when I get to be 85, if they start telling me I got to retest, I'm going no. to get in my car and start mowing people well, down. Well, the other thing is I'm going to say, well, fuck, I survived when I was 30, and there were a bunch of 85-year-olds. Yeah. Now I get it to my time to go take some people out. Yeah. There's Country Kitchen, right? <laughs> <And> country Kitchen. <laughs> There's a Country Kitchen near where I live. Yeah, Country Kitchen is right. What was it going to be originally? It was going to be uh, like First Cafeteria or something. First Cafeteria is like, that's definitely where the old people went, where, where we grew up. You think so? Would they let's not use furs, or I don't know? I can't well, remember why we did Country Kitchen, but... <laughs> there was a Country Kitchen, too. There was one in Boulder. I think, I think. we just liked how Country Kitchen sounded better. <laughs> I think there was one in Boulder. You know, like, Country Kitchen. And then, obviously, the the Grey Dawn, the title, and the and the uh, the scene where all the people, the old people, helicopter in is from Red Dawn, a great movie, uh, where the Russians decide they're going to invade America from Colorado and then move outwards, right? Yep. Yeah, that was a really bad plan. <laughs> Russians and Cubans. Mm -hmm. But they didn't count on Patrick Swayze. Yeah. And his <laughs> band of Wolverines. <laughs> yeah, Cubans. That's the crazy. It's the Cubans. <laughs> so they, just so they can... Yeah. That's so... Why the Cubans? Yeah. Um, uh, but anyway, we should go to the next episode because it might be my favorite episode. Of yeah, the time. next one's really good. This is definitely among my top ten favorite episodes of all time. Um, this was another very last minute idea that sort of all came together all just based on this place we used to go as kids in in Denver Colorado called Casa Bonita um, which by the way let me just stay off the off the bat that Casa Bonita let us use their name and the yeah. restaurant in this re in this episode which is makes them even cooler yeah. than they already are because most places won't allow their name or likeness to be used in South Park but because we be could not, we you know, we grew up with you know. So it was like, well, are you gonna rip on Casa Bonita? It's like, how can we rip on Casa Bonita? It was like <laughs> that was your dream as a kid to be able to go to Casa Bonita for your birthday, and it basically is. We you know we didn't make anything up here. Basically, everything that Cartman says they have, that's what they have, and it's really modeled after what it looks like. A lot of the animators and and Eric Butters, the animation director here, knew had gone to Casa Bonita many times for his birthday as well. Well, not only that, but any, but we have uh, animators from Kansas who knew about Casa Bonita, yeah. uh, from New Mexico that knew about Kansas, uh, Casa Bonita. Basically, if you grew up within a few hundred miles of Casa Bonita, you knew about it because yeah. you wanted to go. 
And because I, you know, it's like one of those places where, you know, as being a kid, it was like you were in Disney World version of Mexico. Huge, awesome, amazing place with everything. And then, of course, we all went back, like, in college, and it's just this kind of crappy little place in a strip mall. Yeah, it's not as cool when you go back it's to really older. Definitely. But I still think kids probably still love oh, it. Oh, yeah, no, and I will definitely, I'll take my kids right there, you know, as soon as I have some someday. <laughs> I'll be definitely taking them to Casa Bonita. <laughs> Because <laughs> there was there was just nothing better. But yeah, I, I remember this divers and a gorilla. This episode started with the idea. I just had the idea of wanting of having Cartman want to fool betters, and we had this idea for a long time where it was like I wanted Cartman to to do the thing with the telescope where he makes butters think an asteroid is coming towards Earth, and he just holds up the little rock and it gets him down into a bomb shelter. And we, we I sat there going, but you know we just got to figure out why would he want butters down in a bomb shelter and then. <laughs> I, it was on a on a Thursday as usual, and we're like, well, what if you know, Butter? There's a birthday party, and and Cartman gets to go if Butters can't go, and all that, and it all sort of came from that. To me, this the end of the show is if if you had to explain like what kind of character Cartman is, it the end of the show is perfect, where he has to rush through Casa Bonita, the cops are all of them was after him, and the fact that he's like, gotta go here, gotta have fun, can't go over here, how oh, cool? And then but that to me is Cartman. I don't know why, like, that typifies what kind of crappy yeah. character he is. Where he's like, just because there's nothing learned, there's nothing, <laughs> it's never about, you know, what he learned about what he did or anything, or that he's gonna get in trouble. None of that matters. It's just he wants to go to Casa Bonita. It doesn't <laughs> matter for how long he's going. And he can have fun there, even though he's really not having fun. Yeah. That's him. Look at him there. I love his haircut there. <laughs> That's perfect. Hi, Cass. I know you don't. <laughs> but uh, I really like all this stuff. I mean, I, I always love stuff between Cartman and Butters just because they're such opposites. But it's like uh, when uh, when Butters finally gets released and, and Cartman's taking him out in the refrigerator and trying to make the sounds of everything that's been oh, yeah. going on. That was just, I really like this episode. Good stuff. Good stuff from South Park here. Yep. Let's good, move on. Good stuff. Okay, children, let's take our seats. We have so, a new... This episode had been in the works for a while, too, just because um, I grew up around a lot of Mormons. There were a lot of Mormons where I, in Colorado, I guess, because it's so close to Utah, where I grew up. My first <laughs> girlfriend in high school was Mormon, and had to, I went to her family's house for family home evening a few times, and was just like, what the fuck is going on here? But um, because of orgasmo and because of other things, you know, just got into learning a lot about the Mormon religion and just, wow, wow. <laughs> and I'd always sort of said, like, you know, basically every Mormon I know is a really good person and, like, really nice. And uh, so, uh, you know, I can't, you know, can't really rip on them because, you know, they're, they're good. It, it's obviously working because they're good people and they're nice people. But you know what? Wow. Yeah, that's I weird. mean, when, when you, just like any religion, when you really get into, like, what you're supposed to buy into, if you buy into this, it's pretty amazing. And well, yeah, th that was the hardest thing about this episode was that we were doing stuff and saying here's what mormons think here's here is the mormon religion here's and but it, everyone thought we were just making stuff up to be funny but we're not we're not making the stuff up in this show the this, flashbacks this is, is all basically real. is exactly what the story of joseph smith is yeah that's exactly what, that doesn't even get into the really goofy stuff of what's actually in the book of mormon yeah no dude when you start to get into like the actual book of mormon which is about the Lamanites and the Nephites and this Jesus coming to America. Two, two races of people that lived in America way before the Native Americans did. and Turned into the Native yeah, Americans. Yeah, basically the evil ones became the Native Americans. It's just, it is hardcore, dude. And it is so, like, I mean, it's almost as ridiculous as believing in the Catholic stuff. Yeah. It really is. The reason why hardcore. we uh, we both love uh, knowing a lot about the Mormon religion and telling practicing Catholics about it because, like, isn't that goofy? And they're like, yeah. And then and then you just get to that point where you can basically say, yeah, but it's no more goofy than your religion. You know, it's what it's that perfect religion that obviously an outsider thinks is really stupid until you go, well, if you were from Mars, it wouldn't look any more goofy than your dumb religion, too. That's kind of why I like knowing about Mormons. But it's really funny because a lot of people, like, especially, you know, the sort of the younger audience that they never, they never love the sort of more religious political shows as much. But the younger audience was really just like... Well, that that wasn't that funny, you know, because they just didn't get. But the people that thought this episode was really funny were Mormons because they knew all this stuff. What they'd been told this stuff from the time they were kids, and they're actually seeing it animated. It, and I think it helped a lot of them see just how dumb it all kind of was. Yeah, and but again, I really, it's I like, just like I like the end of this episode where it comes around to that point though of like, yeah, it's it's stupid. And even I think a lot of people who are religious, they even kind of know. All right, it is kind of stupid, whatever. But if I kind of 
do this little playtime thing. It works for me, right. so fuck off and leave me alone. No, and that's why I think the healthy people are the ones that are, and which is why I have a lot of good friends that are Mormons, good friends that are Catholics, and it's like the ones that are healthy are the ones that are like, these are stories that help tell me how to run my life, and these are stories that help mold, you know, mold a society, and that's what they are. But it's just when you get people really saying, you know, Joseph Smith was a prophet, that you're just like, wow, that's pretty rough. That's yeah. pretty rough. <laughs> and this is a little kid here is voiced by Kyle McCullough. One of our writers. Yeah, I mean. Who grew up Mormon. And he was Mormon. He's from Canada, and he grew up Mormon. He was a Canadian right. Mormon. How's that for a double whammy? Actually, my best friend in sixth grade was a Canadian Mormon from Calgary. And I went to Lake Powell for a week with a Mormon, red-headed Mormon family. That's where I learned everything about Mormon. That's a good story. <laughs> That's a great story, <laughs> That's probably good for this one, right? Yeah, that's pretty good. That's enough of that. From the Book of Mormon! All right! Ow! Uh, so this episode is called Bud Out, and it's basically about Rob Reiner and smoking laws. Uh, and this episode is kind of the one that a lot of people point to, a lot of reporters and stuff, when they say that we're conservative. But I don't... I guess there's, it, it's sad that there's something conservative about mm, about these uh, being against these smoking laws and stuff. But this is one of those episodes because we kind of rip on Rob Reiner. Because some of you don't know that uh, living in California, Rob Reiner, he uh, he's really into politics here in California, and he did something that put some ballot on the measure or something that raised cigarette prices, uh, taxes on cigarettes like by fifty cents or something yeah. like that. And uh, and so we resorted to calling him fat, basically. Yeah. Trying to make a political point. <laughs> that was our sort of rebuttal. Too, yeah, rebuttal. You're you know. fat and you're full of goo. <laughs> but it really, it's really too bad because actually one of the most influential movies on me as a kid was Spinal Tap. I, oh, think, I yeah. think that's the movie that got me into like playing music and using music for comedy. And like, uh, he's done other great movies too. Yeah, uh, Princess Bride. Yep. And Stand by Me. Yeah. And, and Misery. Then, for some reason, he decided to take all that and turn it into the energy of ruining people's good times. And understand, neither Matt and I are smokers. I've never been a smoker. I used to smoke, but I quit well before we did this episode. Yeah. But it, and it was basically like, uh, you know, we, we go to bars, though, and my parents smoke, and I know people that smoke, and our sort of point is like, you know, there's a lot of people who a cigarette is about the only vacation they have. Like, that's, that's their sort of fun they get to have, and not everyone is Rob Reiner and gets to go to the Bahamas for three months to have fun and and also it just seems super ridiculous for a man that weighs 600 pounds to be going around worrying about his health from someone else's cigarette smoke i mean there's no doubt that dude was going to die of you know a coronary disease well before someone's secondhand smoke was the second and second secondhand smoke has been the most overwrought People now think if they get any cigarette smoke in their face, they might get cancer. Yeah. And it's just fucking ridiculous how bad people have been sold on that. And uh, I still am somebody, when I go to a bar or I go to a party, even though I don't smoke, I hang out in the smoking section because that's where all the fucking cool people are. It's kind of true. You want to hang out with your it's, fucking parents yeah. and accountants, you hang out in the non-smoking section, you hang out with Slash. Yeah. <laughs> Slash is in the smoking section. Who do you want to hang out with? It's the same, you know. It's the same old argument about extremes. It's totally great if you don't smoke and you don't want to smoke. But as soon as you go around being mighty and righteous about not smoking and telling everyone else how lame they are for doing it, go fuck yourself. Yeah. That's all. You can't smoke on the beaches in California now, in yeah. LA, and you can't smoke in parks. Yeah, it really bummed me out when it moved to. I thought, you know, when it happened in LA, it's like, oh well, that's LA. That that is LA. That makes sense. There's a lot of, you know. Yeah. It's going to happen here, but now, you know, New York, L London was crazy. London, no, London hasn't happened yet. It happens next year. Oh, well, but it's Italy, happen. Italy, it happened. Ireland. Yeah, it's going to happen. It'll happen everywhere. Except for maybe Vegas. And again, you know, it's like the problem, is, and this is, this is, this is, I guess, what, the, why we're conservatives, quote unquote, <laughs> is because our opinion is not if people don't want to smoke, you know, don't tell me not to smoke. Our opinion is if I want to have a bar, if I go out and make money, and I have a bar and I want my bar to be a smoking bar then I should be allowed to do that and I want smokers to be able to come to my bar and people will know there'll be big signs on the door saying this is a smoking bar if you don't like smoking don't come in this bar why can't I do that and that is a, that's conserv that's being a conservative and and so if call me a conservative I'm a conservative I just don't think every time you get annoyed by something or irritated something you should run to the government and try to make a law and it's the perfect like tyranny of the uh, of the majority because 
concept that's n not supposed to be uh, is supposed to be uh, what our constitution is supposed to protect us against, which is most people who don't smoke are annoyed by cigarette smoke. So what you do is you give those people the option of like, hey, do you want to get rid of cigarette smoke? And they're always all those people go, yeah, fuck the smokers. But it's really not fair because like you know, most of the people even if actually most of the people who go to bars probably smoke. Yeah. You know, my mom probably would vote against that. Yeah, when's the last time Rob Reiner was in a fucking bar? Anyway? Yeah. It's just so fucking lame. He's at Pizza Hut all night. Or in his big house in Malibu or in his yeah. big yacht in Bahamas. Yeah. There's people like in working class bars like around where we live and it's like all they want is a beer and a smoke yeah. to cool off from their day. And Rob Reiner's like, no. <laughs> I'm going to make it more expensive. Oh, no, you don't. So we filled him full of goo and made him fat, but we still like some of his movies. And but not anything too, he's done lately. He can go it's just, fuck himself. It's just too bad he can't do anything good. No. All right, let's move on. We're getting too righteous. This I remember this episode being one of those that actually we spent all day Thursday trying to come up with an episode and couldn't. And then I remember we all went up to my house, all the writers, um, and it wasn't. And now it was Friday. And whenever this happens, where it's like we've lost a day of animation, then everyone starts really freaking out. But um, we'd had the idea to do raisins. We had the idea of raisins of a Hooters kind of place, but with younger girls called raisins. We thought it was funny, but it was like, how is that an episode? Um, and we sort of backed into it that way, going, how can we do the raisins? Okay, why are the boys there? And it's like, well, why do boys go to Hooters? And it's like, well, you know, there's always the times when the guys will take like a friend to, to try to cheer him up if his girlfriend just broke up with him, to, to show him there's other girls out there with big boobs. And so, mm -hmm. that uh, cheers you up. So then that's when the idea of let's have Stan, let's have Wendy break up with Stan. And so this is the episode where Wendy breaks up with Stan and they've been broken up ever since. Right. Actually. It was still. great. It's the, he, the, he just got broken up with right there. And this is the way you broke up and got together when, you know, you were in elementary school. You know what? Let's, I break up with you. It's like that, yeah. you know, it's that <laughs> quick and it doesn't matter the next day. You forget about it, but then not we got Stan. This, what song was this? This is uh, Cinderella. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know what you got going. <laughs> we had to get this song, I remember. We were like, we have to have that song. It's a perfect song for that feeling. But a lot of great stuff came out of this episode, um, which was the Raisins girls, of course, and then the goth, the goth kids. kids. Yeah. And I remember that just came out of, I was writing the scene where uh, Stan was all bummed out, and Kyle was trying to cheer him up. And I just wrote the line, I had Kyle say, you know, all you do is mope around all the time. You might as well go hang out with the goth kids. It was just going to be a little joke. And then we we're all kind of like, oh, I want to see that. I want to see him go hang out with the goth kids. And so sort of the last minute addition to this show was the creation of the goth kids and Stan becoming one of them. And we've since used them in, in shows since because they're just great characters. Everyone who grew up in America basically knows about goth kids. Yeah. They're always there at everyone's school. They all know that kid that's always flipping his hair out of his eyes. <laughs> Has to wear And black. what's funny is they're still exactly the same. Yeah, like, exactly you can go to a high school now and the goth kids look exactly the same. Fascinated with death. Yeah. It's so weird. They're the same exact kids. They always, in the, uh, where I grew up, there was a Perkins, which is like Denny's. Uh, there was a Perkins that stayed open 24 hours and then you could, you know, get a bottomless cup of coffee. And so anytime you went into Perkins, there was all the goth kids there just drinking coffee for like five hours and they would be there all they would just stay there yeah that's where they hung out was at perkins <laughs> so this like, is my that. this is my favorite moment in the show when jimmy tells wendy she's a cunt it's a great yeah like why they let us do this you're a cunt because he's just yelling cunt that's such a reach. <laughs> that's, that's just a, such a fucking reach. We spent a long time going, okay, cunt, uh, what, con, contagionist, con, like, yeah. And finally, we had to say continuing, cunt, cunt. Continue. He should be saying cunt, 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 cunt. That's terrible. Oh, we got this song too. Yeah, this is just all the songs. This shows how fucking everything we do is. From the 80s, <laughs> yeah. we don't have an Eve current. Like Stan's current supposed to be an eight-year-old, eight-year-old modern boy. He would not be listening to any of these songs. To Air Supply or Cinderella, he would have no idea. I what guess these that's songs almost are. 70s, isn't it? Air Supply. Yeah. yeah. What's the point of living when the only girl I ever loved is so? Anyway, that was a great episode. Let's go to our last one. Yeah. Not now. This was the final episode of the season, which a lot of times comes right at Christmas time, and we always bang our heads against the table going should we do a Christmas episode just because it puts a little extra stress on us because you know to us Christmas shows have to be good and we hate to get into we hate to get into one a few days and be like oh this isn't that great but um, luckily I really like this one this one I got nominated for an Emmy too I think actually yep it did 
But uh, this was the first time. We we said before that Ike was adopted and that he was from Canada, and that explained why his head looked the way it did. And so we, I remember we came up with this idea of Ike's parents showing up from Canada, wanting him back. But we never thought of it as a, as a Christmas episode um, until we we sort of came up with the Wizard of Oz idea, right. having them go up there. What's um? So this episode is is uh kind of infamous because on Sunday, I don't know what the date is on this episode, but the Sunday before the Wednesday this aired, uh, they caught Saddam Hussein in that hole in Iraq, and that gave us our perfect Oz character for uh for the end. Yeah. And what's also funny though is, and I can't, we must have known this at some point, but uh. There's a whole thing about this new prime minister that's moved to Canada and changed all the, the laws, which is ultimately you find out is Saddam Hussein. There was actually a new prime minister in Canada just a few weeks before this. Um, I guess that must have come up. I don't know why we would have all it, cared no, about that I or think known we, that. I remember we came up with it, and then Kyle said, oh, that's great, because that's true. Oh, yeah. Like, is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, there, was, there happened to be. So this is like double whammy on yeah. the current events. But that was, uh, it was really fortunate they finally caught Hussam, Saddam Hussein, because it really gave us a great end to this show. That, of course, being the most important thing. Which we didn't have, yeah. We all. had any fucking ending. But actually, what I like about... My favorite part of this episode is Cartman always telling Kyle he's just going to kick his ass if this doesn't work out, and if he misses Christmas, and he's just talking trash the whole episode. Yeah. And finally, at the end, Kyle punches him a little bit. He slaps him. We, like, drew a whole new... We drew a whole new head for Cartman with this big baby baby crying yeah. mouth that we'd never used before. It was pretty perfect. The other thing is the French Canada and the French Canada song when he says the other Canada is a bullshit Canada. Yeah. And they let us say bullshit. Yeah. I don't know why. They they just, no, they didn't know I was they saying did, They thought I said bougie. They like said a I said French bougie word. like bourgeois, bourgeois. Yeah. But I like to hear that the Canadian car has square wheels. <laughs> 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 but uh, Yo, it was kind of cool. I mean, it was just kind of like everything had come full circle because we had started the thing working on our 100th episode. We had started the whole this whole season seven working on the 100th episode, which was that I'm a little bit country because the Iraq war had broken out and all the protests were happening. And as the year had gone by, you know, we did seven episodes and then took time off and came back and did these. And then this episode basically ended with, on Sunday night before it aired, with Saddam getting caught. And I was putting that into the show. So it was sort of, I think you could really call this the Iraq war season. Yeah, let's just do season seven, the Iraq war. We'll call it that for sure. Um... But we'll call it season seven, The Cost of War. I think it was a really, really great season, but not as good as the one that came after this. I think season eight was even better. We really hit our stride then, yeah. yeah. Here, we still hadn't figured some things out. We were st- <laughs> was after, after six years, we still really didn't quite know what we were doing. But seventh year, bam, baby. We figured it out. But anyway, hope you enjoyed them as much as we love making them. Thanks for listening. Everyone says that. Yeah, don't say that. Bye.